extraterrestrials living among you. Hello I'm Marie Swaru. This is one of the most important subjects to share with you, and although I know this has been talked about before, it has never gone in the direction I'm going to take it today. This is my opinion, and my point of view, with no intention of imposing any of these ideas on anyone else. And many want proof, and no, we are not going to give any, first because such proof goes against our physical integrity and safety, and second because we are not interested in convincing anybody. Whoever has eyes to see, as I say. I'm sharing all this because I know it is useful information for a large audience of people, mostly starseeds, who need it for their own process of making and forming their own perception of reality. It is difficult information to understand and to digest, but someone has to share it. From the beginning of time there have always been non-humans living among you, sometimes only visiting others a lot longer, even for an entire lifetime. I'm not talking about star seeds that would be another related subject, today I'm going to talk about one specific type of extraterrestrials. I'm talking about Lyrian space humans of the type, or vast group of extraterrestrials that are physically exactly like Earth humans, or at least on the outside, they look alike enough to pass off as human with a pair of jeans and a rock and roll t-shirt on. There have been, and still are, so many space human races entering and exiting Earth, that I'm not even going to bother to try to enumerate them all, but some of the most known, who commonly do that, are the Amites, then of course, the Centauri or Alfretans, the Antarians, and many from the Pleiades star system, including Tejitans. There are three main ways to enter Earth. The first is when a soul is physically born there, a starseed, this first type is called a crawl-in. The second is called a step-in, it is when a soul does not want to live more time on Earth, and wants to go back home but it is inhabiting a healthy human body. At one or another point in life, depending on prenatal agreements, among others, that soul exits the healthy human body and is replaced with another that wants to continue with the human experience, from that point in life on. This new soul will inherit all the life and identity of the first one, including all its life memories, responsibilities, and problems. The soul switch can happen as the result of an accident, a near-death experience, or simply during sleep, although there have been word of cases that have occurred in normal waking hours. The third type is the one I want, and need, to talk about, and it is called a step down. This is when a full extraterrestrial, that perhaps never before has been on Earth, and of any age, literally steps down from an extraterrestrial starship, dresses on like a human, and walks into society trying to pass of as one. Although they have been doing that for ages, nowadays there are record amounts of them. Perhaps because there is so much craziness going on, on Earth, that it has never been easier to pass off, as human. They dress as a human, step off a starship and then they go and do, whatever they want, or need to accomplish on Earth. And then, when they are done, they go to a previously designated area, where their starship, with their friends, picks them up again, in a classical dust-off. Some may step down for a few minutes or hours, to get something, like some food for example, or to get scientific samples, and others may live on Earth for many years, using a human identity they may have fabricated before stepping down or they may use the identity of a human that has died or has gone missing. They plan the identity they will take on, very carefully, and will go through all what it takes, through all the motions to behave like what it is expected of them. The variations for this are innumerable. 
Now, I'm going to talk openly and directly about Swarunians. As mentioned before, Swarunians are a genetically different variant of Tejitans. And one of their characteristics is having the constant habit of being around Earth, or on Earth, precisely as step downs. Simply because we've come to love Earth and its people, and we perceive it as our second home, after the planets orbiting the Pleiadian star, Tejita. We've been around and on Earth, mingling with the human population for so long, that it is more than logical to understand that we've taken on many good things, because humankind and the Earth is full of beautiful things to adopt and to cherish. So, yes, we do have a lot of human influence. And I know we do all we can, to take the good and not the bad, but sometimes they come together, one defining the other, so yes, it's a pickle. But one thing I must make very clear, is that although we've lived there, no one of us has ever been born there. We are not human, and we are not starseeds, we are full extraterrestrials, born off planet, grown and educated far from here. Many of us, including full Tejitans, have taken on human identities for just about any reason. Mostly simply to be able to be there, on Earth, to be with our friends and to enjoy all what your beautiful planet has to offer. We hold a unique perspective about human culture, and of life in space among other stellar races as well and at the same time we can understand humans better than most other of those stellar races because we have been there with you, we know what it takes to survive on earth, we've driven cars, we have bought food in your grocery stores, and we know what your chocolate tastes like, as an example. We literally live in two worlds at once. We can live among you for months or years at a time, or like most of us, we go down just for a few hours, or days at the most, and then we come back up here to our large mothership orbiting Earth, or we may soon, go back down to Earth again, or we can decide to go back to our planets, Tema and Era, for some time, or, for good. Although I'm talking about Swarunians, being one of them myself, many Tejitans have done that before, and still do the same as we do. And as I've said before, many star races with human appearance do this all the time as well. Having been on Earth, and even lived there, we have developed a taste, and need, for many of humanity's things, including nice comfortable shoes and clothes, particularly cotton ones, some of your music, especially the old, or older one, and a lot of your wonderful food, among many other things. But sometimes, having been here near Earth, orbiting, or down there on the surface, we have many times, come to depend on Earth's resources for our very survival. Also being in the need to generate some money, somehow, in order to purchase food and all the things we need to keep living on Earth, or even near Earth, as the Tejitans, logically, cannot provide us with human things or with anything that is not of Tejetan origin, and obviously we cannot hold a normal job. And we have also developed a need for your art, some of your gadgets, and for some of your toys as well. That's why Yashi likes brand dolls you recognized in my previous video, Yashi and Child's Play. And yes we can replicate many things, but never food as it results in a toxic caricature of the real thing and that has no nutritional value, but that is another subject. But we can replicate objects for example, but sometimes we simply prefer the originals, only because they are the genuine artifacts. And we value the most what is handmade, as you can imagine. So. I guess this explains a lot about why sometimes we are seen as too human, because we have adopted many beautiful things from your culture and planet. And we've managed to incorporate all that, into our personality, 
having been able to mix it all in a beautiful way, with the values, and all the rest of the Tejetan culture we come from. In a valid way, most Tejetans are more extraterrestrial in thought and nature, than what we are, simply because they do not hold our unique perspective, and understanding of Earth, and of everything that has to do with it. So Tejetans usually come to us, the Swarunians, to ask for our opinion and advice. They know we hold a particularly clear view of what is going on, on Earth, the cabal that controls it, their agendas, and so on. We are counselors, holding a clear and unique understanding of both cultures, both the human, and the Tejetan. And that also explains why it is us who are doing most of the talking, and not others. We are expeditionaries, researchers, and explorers here, near, and on Earth. And talking a little more about myself. Yes, I've lived on Earth, and many years, of my late childhood, being that I will be, 15 years old soon. I know what it is like to go to school there, I know what it is like to be sent to the principal's office, for contradicting the information my teacher was giving, and I did so because, I knew better. I've walked your streets, I've been to your cinema, and I even had to wear a face mask recently, all that situation, being the main cause why I'm back up here, in Earth's orbit, in a starship. Swarunians hold two cultures, and we know both very well, so I know we are among the most qualified to talk about exopolitics, in our own, unique way, and perspective. And all this doesn't make us less ET. As we have explained before, there is no clear boundaries, between what is human, and what is extraterrestrial. It is a foggy, murky boundary, only few on Earth are starting to understand. This also because, the extraterrestrials themselves have kept this a secret for long, mostly for their own safety. Swarunians love Earth and humanity, as much as we love Tejita and everything in it. We are children of two worlds, and two cultures. Thank you all for listening to me today. All my love, and a big hug. Marie Soiru